And how's it going, guys? Joshua Lafemi here, live from LA. And welcome to Creative Week with Herman Huang on the Olufemi channel. Creative Week is a time when we step in every day for an entire week with one of my friends that's more creative and more talented than myself and we cover a bunch of really awesome cool topics. So who is my bro Herman and what can you expect from this week? Herman, also known as Coffee Liquor on Instagram, is literally one of the coolest digital content creators that I know. I could literally just sit on his Instagram forever and just literally scroll down all of his content, which is a mix of photography, captivating VFX, travel edits, and a lot of other random stuff. This week, he's committed to releasing one VFX tutorial a day on the channel, which is crazy. Today, we're gonna to be talking about hand-drawn animations in After Effects. But first, of course, we're gonna talk about Envato Elements. If you're watching this video, you're probably a video editor, and Envato Elements is a video editor's dream. It's a subscription service that gives you unlimited downloads of the most incredible stock footage, like cloud and fog overlays, aerial footage, fire, lightning, they also have incredible VFX packs, Premiere and After Effects templates, sound effects, royalty-free music, and literally anything you could ever want as a video editor. Just by clicking the link below, you will automatically get a free first month. You'll see that coupon for the free first month at the very, very end after you've finished signing up. And that's it. I use Elements literally in some regard every day. Now I got two tickets, one for me and one for you, and we're gonna take a quick flight over to beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. I can't wait to finally try some Tim Hortons. You can actually download the After Effects project file that Herman will be using in the description below for free. Herman Huang, the floor is yours. Thank you for the sick introduction, Josh. Now today we're gonna learn how to overlay hand-drawn animations on top of your footage. And I did it for a quick Instagram video. Let's check it out. Now I did this because I was inspired by the popular doodle effect that's been going around a lot. Um, you see it a lot on Instagram videos, you see it in music videos, there's so many tutorials on it. In fact, Josh has an amazing tutorial on how you can animate glowing lines on your footage as well. So you should check that out. But for me personally, the effect that I wanted to go for were to have the strokes feel like there was a bit more weight to it and feel a little more fluid as opposed to this rough vibe. Now, I'm not by any means an animator or anything like that, but I did want to share with you what I've learned and how I created this result. So if you decide to actually, you know, go for the style, you're not limited to the uh, paintbrush tool in After Effects. Now in this video, I'm going to be sharing three ways that you can do it. The three different methods that I used um, for the video that you just saw actually, and they all have their different strengths in uh, different situations. So it's up to you to decide uh, which one you actually want to go for. And before we actually get into it though, let's go into what you actually need. Now first you're going to need After Effects and Photoshop. Those are the two programs that you're gonna be primarily working with. Another thing that you're gonna need is a tablet. Now it could be a graphic tablet of your choice. In this case, I was using a Wacom uh, Intuos tablet that I just bought off Amazon. Uh, it doesn't have to be something expensive. It doesn't even need a screen on it or anything like that. And before you actually make the purchase and spend the money on it and see if it's actually worth your while, maybe hit up a graphic you know, illustrator friend or an animator friend and see if they have one that you can try this effect out and then see if it's a good fit for you. So this is the one that I'm using. You can kind of see uh, over here. There's like a there's a mark from drawing everything. Yeah, I use I use Wacom because it's a trusted brand. But like I said, you can just use anything really. Now the third and final thing is of course the footage that you want to animate on top of. Now make sure that whatever footage that you use, uh, let's say that you're painting, you're animating white lines like what I did in my video, then just make sure that your footage is dark enough so that the animation will be crisp and clean and actually look clear. And vice versa if you are planning to paint, you know black or like darker colored lines, just make sure that your footage is bright enough as well so that they can show up. Now method one is animating all of it in Photoshop. So just make sure that you pull up Photoshop and uh, let's get into what we're gonna do. So let's start things off by first opening up Photoshop. You are going to create a new document. In this case, I have the resolution set to the same dimensions as the video that I'm actually importing. So in this case, it's Instagram's portrait mode dimensions, uh, 1080 by 1350. I'm gonna hit create and then I get this. And the first thing I wanna do is go up to window and pull up my timeline, which is all the way in the bottom over here. And this will give me this. And the next thing I'm gonna click is create video timeline right over here. And when I do that, it gives you a timeline very similar to Premiere or After Effects. Now, a lot of people don't know that you can actually work with videos in Photoshop. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So what you wanna do is drop in your video. So I have it right here, literally just gonna drag it into Photoshop and it gives me this. 
So it's giving me the option to kind of move it around. So I'm just going to center it, hit enter, and now it's planted into your document. And I can actually play it through, scrub through just like you would in your NLE. In this case, I already have all the effects kind of set. So I have this little crop in, the sparkly effect, and all these other fancy stuff. So all I have to do is animate on top of this video. Now I'm just gonna delete this layer underneath because I don't really need that. And how you start animating is by creating a new layer, but not just a normal layer, like the one that we deleted. So you don't just hit over here and then draw on top of it. Otherwise it's going to be a still image. So I'm gonna undo that by hitting Control Z. I'm going to go to layer, I'm going to video layers, and then new blank video layer. And what this does is, as the name implies, it gives you a new blank video layer. So now you can actually animate things on this layer. So when you have your tablet ready, you're basically ready to start animating. Uh, first, let's go to a section that I actually want to animate as an example. So I'm going to move this work bar so that it kind of just starts and ends in that shot, just so it's a little bit easier and cleaner. So we'll do that. And then of course I can scale in and out to my timeline using this slider on the bottom over here. I'm gonna start over here and then make sure that the top layer is selected. And for organization's sake, let's call it flare animation because I'm doing some card flares. I can also trim this layer to match that and not have super long layers that are unnecessary and could be a bit of a headache to organize later. And assuming that you have your tablet plugged in and you're ready to rock and roll, what you're gonna wanna do is go into your brush settings and what's gonna give some weight to the actual strokes that you're drawing. And I'm gonna first choose a brush that I'm gonna use. Now these are some free ones that I found online and you can do the same thing by Googling up some free Photoshop brushes. And I feel like they're gonna give better textures than the normal ones available already in Photoshop. So in this case, I'm just gonna choose a random one. This one looks pretty good. And I'm gonna change the size to something reasonable. And of course I can change it later on. If you can see while I'm using my mouse to actually paint, it's giving this evenly thick stroke. And this is actually looking pretty good already, but a way to give it some weight and to actually make it feel like hand-drawn brush strokes is by, I'm gonna undo this first, going to the brush settings and then clicking shape dynamics and then going into shape dynamics. And then in this area where it says control, you're gonna click it and go to pen pressure. So now what's gonna happen is it's going to detect the pen pressure and determine how thin and thick the line is gonna be. As an example, I'm gonna show you again with my mouse, which can't detect the pen pressure because it's a mouse, it's just clicking. And I'm going to switch over to my tablet and show you the results. So if I do a very thin kind of pressure, as you can see, it's going to give me a very thin stroke. And the harder that I press on the tablet, the thicker the stroke's gonna be. So if I draw something like this, you can see that it feathers out from a thick line to a thinner one. And now you're basically set to start doing the fun part, which is drawing things. So you're gonna go to your frame that you wanna start animating. In this case, let's start kind of over here. And I'm just gonna do a few as an example. So. Kind of like that. And I'm going to go to the next frame. And just kind of continue doing something really rough just for this tutorial. And while you're drawing, if you feel like the lines are a little bit thin, depending on the angle that you're drawing with your pen, you can go into the brush tip shape and then change the angle of the width of the brush stroke. And before I continue drawing, I wanna provide you with a couple tips. One of them is by going to the settings with the four lines as an icon, you're gonna click that. And one of them is enabling onion skins. This is gonna really help you determine where you're gonna draw next. So once I activate it, as you can see, it'll show me one frame before that's semi-translucent. And this can help me determine where I wanna draw next to make the animation fluid. And you can always click the settings icon again and go into onion skin settings and then change how many frames before or frames after and also the opacity of the frame and the frame spacing and all these lovely settings to help guide you on what you're drawing next. The next tip I wanna give you is also in the settings and going to enable timeline shortcut keys if it's not enabled already. So just make sure there's a check mark on the left side and this will allow you to use some shortcut keys that you weren't able to use previously. So for example, if I click the timeline and I were to use my left and right arrow keys, I can actually scrub through frame by frame, which I wouldn't be able to do if I didn't enable those timeline shortcut keys. So for now, I'm just gonna turn off 
onion skin and do a really quick animation for you to see what's going on. So now that I finished roughly animating, just as an example, if I play this through by hitting the space bar, you can see the lines that I've animated over the live footage. Now I'm going to pull up my other document that I've saved where I took a little more time to refine my animation. You can see if I were to go frame by frame, we can kind of analyze what's happening here. So I made some longer strokes over here for the faster moving card. And then I kind of made some thin strokes as well, just to add a little bit of a nice trail as it's moving. You can see some thicker strokes over here that end thinner. And then I add some small ones over here as well. And of course, because the cards are twirling, I kind of added this nice little curve and a thin trail to kind of give it a windy effect. And if I just play this through, this is what I end up with. So be sure to take your time when animating and tweak it around a little bit. Uh, this animation itself that went into the final video definitely didn't take me the first time. It took me maybe five or six tries just because I didn't have much experience animating. But the more that you do it, the more that you'll pick up the details on what'll make your animation look good. So once you're happy with your animation, you can go over here to the icon that I mentioned earlier and you can hit render video to render your video. Now you can either render it with the video layer underneath or you can render just the animation itself by hiding the footage and clicking this eye icon over here. And this will give you a transparent kind of uh, background, but you can always add a black background as well. So you can see just how the animation looks. So in this case, I'm gonna hide this and I'm going to hit this settings icon and go to render video. So there's a few things that you can change in this render video settings. You can change the name of it and also select the destination folder by clicking this and then determining where you want it. You can also change the format to H.264 or DPX or QuickTime. In this case, I think H.264 is just fine. I would make sure that the dimension and the frame rate is the same as well. And then all you have to do is hit render and watch that baby go. So over here in this folder, you can see all the animations that are rendered out individually. So if I play this back, this is kind of what I end up with. And then now I'm gonna composite this over the video in After Effects. So once I have After Effects open, I'm gonna import two things. One of them is gonna be the animation that I just rendered from Photoshop. And the other one is going to be the base footage that I was using earlier. So I'm gonna drop this into a new comp, just like this. And then I'm going to find the moment that I want the animation to start happening. I'm gonna put the animation that I rendered earlier and slap it on top. Of course, I can adjust the time later, but I'm gonna set the blending mode to screen. And that way it'll overlay on top of the live footage. Now in this case, I'm just gonna shift it over by a frame. And congratulations, this is the first way that you can add hand-drawn animations to your live footage. All you have to do now is hit Control M to render the video either natively in After Effects or Q in AME, and then add it to your next music video or promo video. Now, before we continue, if you're liking the video so far, please check out my Instagram page at Coffee Liquor and you can see what I've been working on. Shoot me a DM if you want to chat or if you've got any questions as well, because I'd be more than happy to reply back. All right, let's continue. Now, the second method that we're getting into is the screen cap method. This one is uh, going to depend on how comfortable you are with the tablet. And basically, you're animating in real time on Photoshop, and then you're going to be screen capping it with a program of your choice. Now, personally, I find this great if you want written text to appear, let's say as like an intro to your travel vlog, if you want that kind of like drawing on the whiteboard type of feel, this is great for that. So I'm gonna open up Photoshop again. I'm gonna delete these two layers because I don't really need them, but I'm gonna first make a transparent layer underneath so that Photoshop won't hate me. And I can close this timeline window as well because we're not gonna need that. We are going to actually change the color to black and then fill the entire layer with black by hitting the shortcut Alt Backspace. I'm gonna make a new transparent layer and this is gonna be what I'm gonna draw on. I'm just gonna zoom in so it fits up a little bit bigger. And before you draw anything, you wanna first download a screen capturing software. In this case, I'm using OBS Studio. That's actually what I'm using to screen cap this tutorial right now. Ooh, look at this trippy effect. So once you have this downloaded, it's not too hard to use. You wanna make sure that you add a monitor or a screen to capture and you're also going to right click and then change the properties. Or while you're adding the screen capture, you're going to have this option where you can capture the cursor and you want to uncheck this. But in this case, I'm going to keep it on because I want you to see what's happening. I'm going to change the color to white. And while I'm drawing, you don't want to see this brush tool while you're screen capping. So once you have everything set, you're going to go to your OBS and you're going to make sure that you start recording. Now I'm already recording my screen, so I don't need to worry about it, but you'll have an option that says start recording. So you're going to click that 
and then you're gonna start drawing. So in this case, I'm gonna pick up my pen and I'm just going to write something as an example. Personally, I find this as a great way to have written text appear, or if you want the effect of drawing on a whiteboard. And whatever work of art that you're drawing or writing, just make sure that you have enough space to do so. So once you're happy with your drawing or writing, you're going to hit stop recording. In this case, I'm not gonna stop recording because I still have the rest of the tutorial to go through. And then you're gonna open up the folder that your OBS recordings have been saved to. In this case, it's this video. So if I play it through, this is what I've got. And of course, if you want it to be a little bit bigger, you can always resize it in After Effects, or you can change the dimension to something wider and bigger, and you can always zoom in to your canvas as well. In this case, I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna open up After Effects again, the same composition that we were working on before. I'll just delete everything because we don't need them anymore. And then you're going to import what you just recorded. And I'm just gonna put this into a new composition. And then let's pretend that we have some live footage or you're doing this for an animation. In this case, I'll just make a new solid by hitting Control Y and just changing it to a purple, because why not? And leave it underneath. So I'm going to be working with this screen record. In this case, I'm going to start from over here. I'm gonna trim the clip and then I'm going to have the clip end around here as well. So I'm gonna do that. So now my clip is trimmed. And of course we wanna get rid of this Photoshop interface and only leave the writing on black. So we're gonna throw a mask on this area. And how we're gonna do that is by using the pen tool on top over here. And then we're just going to draw the area that we want to mask and keep. So now we have this. We're gonna set the blending mode to screen. And now you have your hand-drawn animation on either your live footage or a solid in this case. Now you can always fix up your mask just a little bit and you can always rescale as well, although it will lose a little bit of quality, which is why I mentioned earlier, if you need to draw something on a bigger canvas size, just make sure that you zoom in more so it fills more of the screen or change the dimension of it. And a quick tip is let's say that you couldn't draw fast enough and you don't want this whole drawing animation to happen for like 17 seconds, you can right click and then hit time and then go to time stretch. So let's say we're gonna do half the speed of what it is now. Actually, let's do 40% of the speed of what it is now. Gonna hit enter. And then now this whole animation will only last for seven seconds. I'm just going to move the render bar. And if I play this back, this is what it looks like. And right now it's looking a little bit choppy, but a solution to this is to either, number one, draw a little faster in Photoshop, which is why previously I said that it does require some skill on your part. And the second thing you can do is to just make the animation a little bit faster. And I'll set it to 15 instead, so that the duration is about three seconds. So now that you play it through, it's a lot faster. Now, if you feel like it's still looking a little bit choppy because you sped it up and you're not really seeing the strokes as much, one quick tip is that you can right click, hit new, and then create a new adjustment layer. And then you're going to add an effect called CC Force Motion Blur. So we're gonna search up Motion Blur and then drag it onto our adjustment layer. And then now I'm gonna ramp preview this. And this is looking a lot smoother. And that's because it's basically forcing some motion blur. And if I go frame by frame, you can see that it is basically adding some strokes or some translucent strokes between the solid ones. And that's a nice little cheat to smoothen out your animation. And boom, you are ready to render and you've got a sick new effect to your video. Now we're ready to go into the third and final method. This is probably the easiest method. All you're doing is just throwing a fully drawn image into After Effects and then you're animating it through a mask. Now this is great for more intricate drawings and you don't wanna like animate every stroke because it can, it can be time consuming. Although I think that personally, it's worth that level of detail depending on what you're doing. But if let's say the animation is happening really quick, then it's not worth that time. Personally, I did it for my video when I just kind of like did this and the words tell me appeared. It happens so quick that you can just do a wipe and it'll feel like it's kind of animated. You have that option and we'll get into how you can quickly do that in After Effects. So first draw whatever you'd like in Photoshop and save it to whatever image format that After Effects will accept. In this case, it'll be PNG. So I've got a folder over here called Freeze Frames and right now it's white on transparent so you can't really see what's going on. But if I throw this into After Effects, just like this, and I'm just going to delete these two things over here. So I just have a solid layer. Just for this tutorial, I'm gonna throw in this drawing, which is a PNG, and it's not yet animated, but what you're gonna do is, as I said, mask in After Effects, and we're gonna do a very simple wipe. So we're gonna start with a mask like this. So it'll show what is 
being shown. So I'm hitting M to show my mask and I'm gonna keyframe the mask path by hitting the stopwatch right over here. So now I've got a keyframe right over here. I'm gonna move a few frames forward and I'm going to adjust these points so that it reveals the drawing like so. And then I'm gonna hit F to go into the mask feather and I'm just going to feather it a little bit so it's not too harsh of a line when it wipes and reveals the animation. And if I play it through, this is what it looks like. Nice and simple. And guys, that is how you do it. Those are three ways for you to add hand-drawn animations to your video. It's gonna look super sick, guys. It's super rewarding when you do it. Before I actually made that video, I never hand animated anything before. I never used a tablet or anything. So now that you're equipped with this knowledge and my experience that I share with you, you're gonna do way better than me and I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. And most importantly, make sure you are subscribed to Josh Alufemi's YouTube channel if you haven't done so already, because he's got a lot of sick tutorials on Adobe After Effects and uh, Premiere Pro. You can learn so much. That guy's always got some dope content up his sleeve. And uh, check out my Instagram as well. My IG handle is at coffee liquor. So until the next video, I'm gonna pass it back over to Josh. Shout out to Herman, one of the awesome teachers that we have on the channel. Thanks so much for sharing your knowledge with us and make sure to check out all the videos in this week's creative series. They can all be linked in the description below. And lastly, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching guys. And as always, remember to keep it chill.